Two years ago, the state legislature passed the school consolidation law, forcing school districts around the state to take a look at how they could save money. Since then, the law has received varying degrees of support. On Tuesday, Maine voters will be asked whether, whether this law should be repealed. Opponents of the law say it costs districts more than it saves and destroys local control. Now, what words are you going to write across the state? Its schools look like most others you'd find around the state. So do the classrooms and the students. But School Union 102 is breaking the law. We're not in compliance. This union, along with School Union 134 and schools in East Machias, are not going along with the state's school consolidation law. And district officials say they see no reason to come in compliance. It just doesn't seem right that... Uh, we're doing everything we can to, to consolidate services, to share services, and yet if this law stays on the books, the towns that I represent, the 11 towns, will see collective penalties of over $200,000. Right now, as superintendent of schools for 11 towns, Scott Porter says by combining services, they're seeing a savings of $135,000. But each of those towns has its own school board, budget, and pays its own bills something the state wants to change. I think that we need to repeal the law and then we all need to sit down and we all need to work uh, cooperatively together to find out how we can save money to reduce the cost of education. Skip Greenlaw has led the charge to get the law overturned. I think this law was flawed from the beginning. He says he's not against consolidation and is happy for the districts where it's worked, but he doesn't agree it should be mandatory and that the district should incur a penalty for not having an approved consolidation plan. You know, I think the question is, this has been uh, top down and not uh, from the ground up. And if it had been from the ground up, I think we would have found substantial savings uh, to accomplish what the governor wanted to. One of the biggest concerns that opponents of the consolidation law have is they say once the state approves a consolidation plan and it's implemented within those communities, there's no way for those communities to back out. You can't get out. I mean, you can get out of a contract. You can get out of you can quit your job, you can get out of a marriage, you can get out of anything. I mean, I thought slavery and indentured servitude went away a hundred or more years ago, back in the 1860s. But this is just turning back the clock in many ways. Maybe sad ones, yes. Scary. Scary. The Yes on 3 campaign also argues that because districts have to even out teacher salaries among all towns, taxes in some places are going up. Greenlaw says in RSU 5, Pownall's taxes have increased 25 percent and Durham's have gone up 19 percent. They say the same would happen in Washington County. Well, in fact, if we did consolidate, there's no question in my mind that it would be an increase to the East Machias taxpayers. Bottom line, opponents of school consolidation say that the loss of local control is devastating. They say one school committee cannot give each town fair representation, that smaller towns will get left out. You want to keep your school open, that's a local decision at, at the, you know, at the local towns. If they don't, then that's up to them. They also say when the subsidy check comes from Augusta, there's no way to equitably split the money. Um, there was no way mathematically to, uh, to get that done. In East Machias, they're happy with the way things are set up now. And what we're saying is, let us show you real dollars. Compare our per student cost to those that have 2,500 students or more. And you'll find that we're comparable. And they worry if the law isn't repealed, those costs are only going to go up. Now, about 84% of districts in the state have complied with the consolidation law. And those who oppose Question 3 say some of the biggest beneficiaries have actually been those rural districts that have been able to work out a reorganization plan. News Center's Caroline Cornish has this part of the story. 